Good morning. It is April 3rd, and it's going to be a gorgeous day. And man, it's really going to be gorgeous. Like mid 70s, sun's going to be shining. It's going to be absolutely awesome. I hope you're all having a great day. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Barry. Admin engineer is also in the house. Everybody's kind of piling in here this morning. I'll give everybody a few minutes. If you're in here and you do like this, by the way, please remember to hit that thumbs up button. It does let YouTube know that you are interested in this content and helps keep us from going all the way to the bottom. If you're here this morning, Say hi in the uh, say hi over in the comments. Freebs says I wish Barry is thirty six over in Pennsylvania. Good morning, Dave Robertson. Everybody piling in this morning. You never know who's going to show up. What a week it has been! What a week! What a week! I hope everybody's got coffee or whatever it is that you drink at this time of the day. Yeah, admin engineer says, thanks for putting me in touch with Faisal. So a lot of times when things um, are out of our depth, uh, we will uh, introduce people to other um, consultants. And Faisal is my go-to person down in Florida. Um, and and we push stuff over there, and he's great. I trust him, and he does he does great work. Good morning, Kamani. I don't know if I butchered that. Sorry if I did. Morning, Nathan. David, noodles. Noodles in the house. Noodles is something that I haven't had. Yes, may the like button smashing commence. I agree. So this is, uh, so what's today? Saturday. So um, we had to make some some changes for our health. Uh, as, a, as a family, we're supporting uh, one another. And uh, we switched right now. We're on the whole 30. And we are, so Thursday was a week, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so we're nine days into it, and everything's going good, which is fantastic, feeling good. I don't have tiger's blood yet. They say that uh, um, after you get the keto flu, then you um, then you get tiger's blood. You know, you're supposed to have all kinds of energy and stuff. I will tell you that I've been waking up at 3 a.m. for absolutely no reason. I'm wide awake, which is an hour before my alarm goes off. Um so that's definitely been interesting, especially when sometimes I'm up until 11 o'clock or uh, midnight. So good morning, Dave. Dave is playing with a UCM 6302 remote connect. Lots of possibilities. Yeah, so interesting about that. We uh, have uh, several clients using remote connect, but I've got one client where the, um, the extensions won't sync over. So we're working with Grandstream on that. It looks like it's an edge case. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Jonathan. So the whole 30, uh, basically the short and long of it is, uh, you can't have any processed foods, no sugar, no alcohol, uh, no dairy. Um, so we are eating nothing but uh, literally like whole foods, no added sugars, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's, it's uh, you know, when they say when you shop on the outside of the supermarket and things are more expensive, um, but it's, it's all fresh ingredients. There's, there's absolutely like no, like nothing is like processed and, and we'll see. Um, it's, it's not, it's not keto by, uh, I can't have pasta either. So it's not keto by, by default. It's the whole 30, but, uh, you know, when you're eating, when you're eating clean and you're eating non-processed stuff, you're going to have less carbs. Um, as, as long as you're also tracking your calories. So it's definitely, definitely, definitely interesting. Morning, Francisco. All right, people are uh, piling in. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that happened this week. So I know there's been a bunch of videos on the update that Brian Krebs put out about the ubiquity breach. And... Most of the videos that are coming out are pretty much saying the same thing. So I'm not going to put a video out. Um, you can go check out uh, Tom Lawrence's video. He did a really good job talking about it. 
Um, and then somebody pinged me yesterday and said that Tom was going to reach out to Brian Krebs and maybe try to get an interview. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so we'll have to see how that shakes out. However, um, I will tell you that I am prepping a video. Uh, now, you know, I'm not a cloud first uh, person. However, a lot of these companies are, you know, they, they're using the cloud and sometimes it makes sense to use it. And so, uh, good morning, Tony from Quick Tech. Good morning, David Anderson. Uh, what I am going to do with my video is I am actually going to come at it. So here's the thing, right? When you watch a lot of these security folks on um, YouTube, they're always talking about the technical stuff and, 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 you know, we're running this software and scanning this and we're doing this and doing that. That's just part of security. Brian Krebs touched on this a little bit in his article. And so I am going to come at it from a different, for those of you that don't know, when I'm not doing network consulting, building awesome voice networks with Grandstream and, and doing all this, I actually, um, uh, I do run an IT department, but security is a huge part of my job. So I live in that every day. I was actually studying for the CISSP. I put that on pause for a minute because a new version came out. And uh, I'm actually studying for my CWNA at the moment, which I was going to have by the end of this quarter. Life happens, but I will have it this year. But anyway, uh, I'm going to focus on some other things like what Ubiquity could have done or should have been doing, um, especially if they're having any type of audits um, for their their practices and procedures. So that video will be coming out um Maybe this weekend yet, if I get some time tonight after everybody's in bed, maybe I'll lay that down. And, um, and uh, hey, Joe with Cajoling Tech, Paul, Douglas, how you doing? Bob Carpenter in the house, Richard, good morning. So, um, and I'm going to probably consult some AWS uh, experts on some of this as well, because I am not an AWS expert. I have people who want me to be an AWS expert, but I'm not there yeah, so there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to put out that's going to be different. It's it's not so much an autopsy because here's the thing. We're never really going to know the truth because here's the other thing. People are like, well, when there's a breach, there should be more transparency. Okay, the first thing that you need to understand it was when there's an actual security breach, the lawyers take over. So that part of the Krebs, um, the Krebs article is correct. Um, because not only is the, I mean, there's going to be lawsuits, there's going to be all kinds of things and, and you can't go about a breach haphazardly. So even if it's been three months and you don't have a lot in the meat, uh, the meat and potatoes about what happened, there's a reason for that. Yes. Companies should be transparent. They have to do so carefully. Um, so we're going to talk about this breach from a totally different perspective than all the other videos that you've seen. We're going to talk, we're going to. First of all, we're going to use the information that was available in the Krebs um, article because that's really all we have to go off of because right now we're not going to pay a whole lot of attention to what Ubiquity is saying because we, obviously we know that they did downplay the breach, so that information is tainted already. So we're going to go off what Brian Krebs uh, has, and we are actually going to um, talk about what companies can do, what you can do, what Ubiquity should have been doing to possibly help minimize this. I'm not saying it's not going to happen because it is true. In 2021, it's not if you get compromised, it's when you get compromised. And so you have to be prepared for those possibilities. And a compromise can be as small as something as a piece of malware uh, that's um, a key logger, or it can be as big as being ransomed, or it could be, who knows, something like this with Ubiquity. Um, so, uh, no, uh, so admin engineer, my, my wake up hour is 4 a.m., but I've been waking up at, uh, 3 a.m. without, um, without a, without an alarm. And, um, it's not even that the, the sun or the sun, <laughs> the moon has, uh, has been that bright or anything like that. Dogs haven't been barking, so it's been very strange, but, uh, Joe, the reason my face looks skinny is there's a twofold reason. One, I'm wearing a hat and two, I've got facial hair. So that's my secret. And when I wear a suit, I wear, I wear those vertical stripes. So that always helps. All right. So what else are we going to talk about? So if you, um, follow me on TikTok, now I made a YouTube short out of this video as well. And I'm going to show you, if you don't follow me on TikTok, 
Uh, I'm at WHOW82. I'll put that in the um, in the chat real quick. Um, I post a lot of shorts, and I'm, I was I want to do the YouTube shorts as well because I think we can put out some pretty cool stuff in 60 seconds. Uh, I, this video that I'm going to show you, I tried, and I got some like so. N- normally, I have pretty pretty thick skin, right? When it comes to this stuff. And, uh, but like the very first comment is, this is what a dumbass looks like. And I was like, okay, I need to regroup. Um, because if you've ever been over to, to TikTok, you know that the, uh, comments over there are brutal. Um, so I posted this, this is a, all right. A so video. exactly how tough is a protectly firewall? Down. Well, we are going to answer that when we run over it with that van right there, that van. All right. So I don't know if you can. If you can hear okay, both, so not I've not tried this before, but this is my TikTok video where I run over a protectly firewall. I was talking with um, Joe and Tony, and I told them, and I told you last week um, on the live stream that I was going to run over the protectly. So we ran over the protectly. Here it is. You'll see this. And uh, I had it as a short on YouTube. And then I pulled it real quick because I think I need to uh, change it. But if you if you watch here, there it goes. Protectly one tire. Somebody's like, okay, he's done. Nope. Here we go. My wife made sure she mashed it up real good. Right, doesn't appear to be any damage. So for part two where we while there didn't appear to be any damage, right, so I have not yet uh, plugged it in. And I am going to do that. I do plan on uh, plugging it in. And, but I've got it right here. So there was a little bit of damage. So next time I run over one of these, I know what I need to do. However, I don't think that the damage that it sustained is going to be enough to keep it from uh, working properly. And I'm going to show you this. Um, and uh, Ressi says TikTok is for 16 year old being <laughs> same, s- sane people avoid it. That's funny. If that's what you think, that's cool. Um, I, I am talking with a lot of content creators over there and they're, now they're starting to cross over into, uh, YouTube. And I really just wanted to see what TikTok was all about and see, you know, how the algorithm over there works. And it's very different, uh, than YouTube and YouTube is always going to be my home platform. So you don't have to worry about that. But here is the protectly that we ran over. And while the top, uh, the fins and everything, so the feet, caused a little bit of a buckle. And I don't know if you can see it. By the way, this is the Willie House Signature Edition. Yeah, I signed it there in case it went bye-bye. There is a little bit of a buckle, and it's hard to see here. Um, but I don't think that it's enough. Now, had I pulled these rubber feet off of the bottom, I think there'd be absolutely no damage to this because it is just a solid block of metal, right? So the feet, these plastic feet, actually helped buckle this metal bottom. And... Uh, I'm going to get a fire extinguisher and safety glasses. And Joe wants me to wear, um, um, Joe wants me to wear safety goggles. And and so I agree with that. So today I am going to do a video and I'll post it. I'll explain that we ran over it. I'll show the damage. I got to figure out how to get a little bit of a better angle on the damage because there's not much. And it's just this bottom plate that seems to be bent, uh, a little bit. And we, uh, we're going to power it on and, Right now, go ahead and put it in the comments, and I'm going to say, too, I think I've got about a 99% confidence rate that this is going to power on and be just fine. So let me know what you think. Yeah. Um, Edmund Engineer says, I know, but can you now make the video on your 3 a.m. extra hour? You know, if, if if my thoughts... Uh, we're in line at 3 a.m. with anything besides get coffee and uh, get woke up. Yeah, that'd be that'd be nice. Yeah, noodles. Like, I, I don't mind doing things like that. You know, I have a, I have so much confidence in the Protectly product. That's why I had absolutely no problem going out and running over it. And Tony from Quick Tech pings me and he goes, you, you're killing me. He goes, I'm in here trying to get this thing configured and you're out <laughs> running it over with a car. But uh, that's that's what we do. Should I shoot it next? Maybe throw some 22 downrange at it, some 9 millimeter, 45 ACP. Uh, I don't know. It didn't do anything to me, so I don't think we should we should 
completely punish it. But I mean, these things are tough. When I tell you that these are tough, they are tough. Yeah, Joe over cajoling says, I bet it'll power up no problem. I bet it's going to power up no problem too. Okay, so if you are interested uh, in those protect leads, all you have to do is a quick Google search. I, I think I pulled the link out. Um, uh, I think I pulled the link out, but uh, like I said, it comes with a config and you can get uh, a bundle that comes with the UPS, the rack mount, which you are going to see, which I have here. Uh, I just have to get my rack put together. So everything is about time, right? And then here's just the standard unit now for $2.99. And um, they're selling quite a few of these. It comes comes with my config on it. Um, I, d I did get a report that one of the bundles didn't come with the config, but Protectly was quick to help the person walk the person through it step by step and get it up and going. So I was pretty happy about that. So while I've got the TikTok up here, um, if you don't follow me on social media, because a lot of this stuff also gets posted on my other social stuff, and it's not enough, it's not enough stuff to get posted as a YouTube video. Here's one right here, though. The these this is Axis Communications now has uh, body cams, and I'm gonna let you watch this real quick. Um, it's like a Pelican case, but it's it's a different brand. You basically don't have to take the equipment out of this, out of this case, and they give it to you. You get the demo for 14 days, and the state of Illinois just uh, signed some police reform legislation in, and so Axis is doing demo after demo after demo because police will have to have body cams. Now, I will tell you that I believe that police should have body cams, and that is not only from a uh, a protection protection for people. Um, but it's also protection for the police because oftentimes we're only seeing one side of the story. And I'm not saying that police are always in the right, but I'm not saying that they're always in the wrong. What I'm saying is that we have to have the whole story, right? You can only make good decisions when you have good data. And when you have shaky uh, cell phone uh, footage, it doesn't do anyone any good, right? So uh, Axis and these other providers are going to be super busy getting um, body cams out to these um, these other, uh, police departments. Let's see back over to the comments. So noodle says still wonder why they don't offer traditional PF sense, but made a complete switch to open sense. So, uh, basically PF sense doesn't really want you running their software on anybody's hardware, but their own. They really don't. Um, so I made a, I made a video. Um, I made a video for um, about Protectly and talked about PF Sense and like this one of the higher ups at at, at uh, PF Sense started just trolling my my Twitter. Realized he was wrong, deleted it, and all this other stuff. They're just not, you know. And I understand they want to make money, and every company should make money, but. Uh, they, yeah, they're not, I mean, they're not super community friendly in my opinion. <sighs> Joe says, you know, it'd be a funny TikTok if you floss the top of the protect lead to apologize to it. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so I don't think, I honestly don't think that there's enough damage here. You can't really see it real good. I don't think there's enough damage here that this thing's not going to boot or that we broke anything. And I didn't hear, um, any, um, any popping, cracking, or anything like that. So Axis just got into the body cam uh, business within the last year. Um, and like everything they else, else they do, the hardware itself is completely different from everything that's out there. The software is different. I will tell you, we won't be going with the Axis body cams because the software is missing some things that that uh, is going to that is mandated or if you're looking at it from a police standpoint, that you have to have. So the next demo uh, that we're going to be doing is with Panasonic. So, um, but the access, uh, we're going to talk to an access engineer and access software uh, person. And we're going to let them know, like, look, state of Illinois, these are the things that you're going to have to have and see what they can do um, for that. So the access uh, demo, um, Oh, so Bob, uh, what the reason that that note is on the 
um, on the, the controller for that camera is because they actually want you on the phone. So they send you the demo kit and then you schedule a web conference, a Zoom with them, and then they walk you through all of the configuration step by step. So uh, they just want to make sure, um, you know, uh, Ressi uh, is saying that apparently in Australia, which I don't know if this is true or not, they've been in the body cam business for a long time. Uh, it'd be cool if you had a link to the cameras off of the Axis website so we could take a look at that. Because as far as I knew, and like I said, I could be completely wrong, uh, they, they just got into the game not that long ago um, as far as body cams go. Now, Axis, Axis actually invented IP cams. So they are uh, the leader there. And they keep um, doing all kinds of, of fan, fantastic things. All right, let's see. Uh, products and solutions. Wearables. Yeah, as far as I knew, this was a pretty new, a pretty new product. They've only got, um, I think, one camera model. They've got some pretty cool things though. The camera has GPS built in. It uh, can detect uh, a fall and start recording automatically. So um, it'd be interesting if you've got a model number on those Resi, because I would like to see if they had a previous generation. I would really like to see where they were at and where we're at now. So, um, but we use a lot of access stuff and I mean, they've got access control. I know it's hard to say access, access control. What'd you say? Access, access control. Um, their analytics are second to none. Now access and Canon have a very, very, very tight, um, relationship and you can actually get access cameras that have Canon glass. Um, they're very high end. And let's see if we can find one here. Not seeing the model number. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Let's see. Net network cameras. Canon network cameras. So access sells and supports. Yeah, so access probably actually if I had to guess, builds these uh, for Canon. But you can get these uh, cameras. Let's see if we can find one where you can actually put the Canon uh, glass on it. See, these have the glass in it. And at one point, they had a link to those, those cameras. Oh, look at this. Explosion protected cameras. I mean, look at this. Holy cow. I don't want to be installing cameras anywhere where they got to be explosion proof. Their PTZ cameras are fantastic. Uh, they've got thermal cameras. Thermal cameras are very expensive. Specialty cameras. All kinds of stuff. All right, let's go back to the, uh, the comments real quick. That's not the comments. There's the comments. All right. Um... The Panasonics are okay. The software is clunky. So we are already familiar with the Panasonic stuff for in-car, and I'm assuming it's all just going to tie together. Unky Joe is in the house. Morning, Unky Joe. Bob says, YouTube doesn't seem to like Willie for me. I've never received a timely notification for Willie's channel, so I'm always late. Yeah, it's probably got something to do with my monetization status, if I had to guess. Um, uh, Steve Kly says, access cameras are awesome. I saw some training videos where, some, where someone shot a vandal-proof camera with a 38 and the bullet roll around in the base and the lens centered and kept on recording. Yeah, their stuff is top-notch. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess that's actually a good use case. Um, installing an explosion proof camera on an oil rig. Never thought about that. Uh, the batteries are not replaceable in the body cams. They charge and sync on the dock simultaneously. So, um, yeah, you don't replace them. Everything is built, is built in. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about First of all, if you are not getting, 
I'm going to show you this. So a friend of mine um, owns this uh, or is involved in this company. And uh, I'm going to show this to you. If you're not, so apparently YouTube did some studies and uh, they didn't think that people liked the email notifications. Apparently only X amount of people opened them and it wasn't enough to keep, keep it going. And so I'm not 100% sure how true that is, but uh, if you check out EchoCast, um, and, and there are several of us that are going to be in this uh, ex, uh, Alpha Creator uh, program, um, which uh, we've, I've been talking with them a little bit about kind of the tools that we'd like to see. And they're also working with huge creators. Um, I can't give you any names, but uh, you can probably see uh, the name that's on the screen right now. And um, as soon as if you if you sign up and you follow, you know, you follow me or Cajoling or Anki Joe or Tony over at Quick Tech, you get an email like as soon as we drop a video, as soon as we go live, you will have an email. And you can do all kinds of cool things um, and create like custom lists of videos that you want to watch. So go check out echocast.com if that's something that you're interested in. The uh, other thing that I wanted to talk about is deep fakes and about how, how crazy with little hardware and little funding this is really getting, right? So this is a TikTok account that is kind of taking the world by the world by st- storm and it's called deep Tom Cruise. And it is actually kind of concerning, um, how good these deep fakes are. I'm going to turn the desktop. Let me ask you this before I do this. Somebody tell me in the comments, please. When I uh, was playing a video, could you hear the, um, could you hear the desktop audio? Somebody let me know real quick before we go through this. And I'm going to look at the comments while we're talking about it. Unky Joe says, try to schedule the live stream. Perhaps YouTube will inform us. Yeah, that's a good idea, Unky Joe. I think I'll try that. And uh, Ferris, I hope I said that correctly. Smash the like button, folks, for Mr. Willie. Yes, 57 of you here and only 16 likes. Let's uh, let YouTube know that we're here and we're watching and people will filter in and filter out. Um, so let me know real quick in the comments if when I played those videos, if you were hearing... The, uh, okay, you could hear the desktop. Okay, perfect. So let me make sure I still got the desktop on. So I'm going to turn the desktop audio up a little bit. And for those of you who don't know who Tom Cruise is, you should go check him out. But this deep fake account, you watch how, how convincing, um, these videos are. Okay. TikTok impression time. This is a five second impression of a snapping turtle. I'll show you one more. Uh, I'll just do this one. Every now and then I like to treat myself. (laughs) And uh, it's good because discipline... Oh. Oh, my God. I think there's bubblegum inside there. Mm. That's incredible. Incre- How come nobody ever told me there's bubble gum? Incredible. Oh, yeah. All right, so if you don't know what a deep fake is, go ahead and look that up. But it is basically being able to create videos like this without the original person being involved. And the quality of those deep fakes is absolutely amazing. So that's where we're at. We've, we've got to uh, scrutinize everything that you see online. Um, so I, it's, it's definitely uh, something that you have. Now, I am obviously not a, a deep fake. I make way too many mistakes for that. But, um, you know, I could see like uh, Joe over at Cajoling Tech uh, doing this as a side project to kind of troll the rest of us that are all friends. Right. And, uh, it'd be, be kind of interesting, but 
if they can do this with Tom Cruise, just think about all the video that you watch all the time and you really are going to have to, I mean, where are we at? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Another thing that I got coming up, um, is, uh, this is by, we talked about this a little bit. This is by Ecos Paints. And this is uh, EMR, EMF shielding paint. They did send me one U.S. quarter of this, which is like 90 bucks for a quarter of this. I've been working with their folks. They've been telling me exactly how I need to use this. Sometimes you need to keep uh, RF in and sometimes you need to keep RF out. And so uh, I am going to be building a box and we're going to be doing some testing with that along with a ton of APs. So uh, I am going to do some wireless shootout videos and it's going to be more than just like one AP. And not only are we going to pit, uh, we're going to pit non Wi-Fi six APs against Wi-Fi six APs. We're going to see who comes out on top. We already know that the grand stream GWN 7630 is actually a better access point than the, uh, ubiquity unify six light AP, uh, just in the testing that we've seen out there. So can you imagine when Grandstream comes out with their Wi-Fi 6 AP, how much better it's going to be than, than what's out there? So, um, yeah, deep fakes are definitely crazy. Uh, what's the surface area that, that this, so this can do 100 square feet, but we want to give it uh, two coats. And so I'm actually going to build a box. I'm going to build a box that all of my APs will fit in. You're probably wondering, like, Willie, how many APs can you actually have? I have uh, just within iShot. Let's see. I've got one, two. Now, if we want to talk about different manufacturers, I've got Cambium. I've got IgniteNet. I've got uh, Lego Wave, Ubiquity, Ingenious. I've got Linksys, Grandstream, Microtik, uh, TP-Link. Um, I've got some off brands, but uh, we've got quite a few um, APs that are going to be in this in this challenge. Yeah, Unky Joe, you definitely need to get the pool clean because uh, all of us do plan on coming to visit you. So every time we talk about doing a meetup in real life, I always volunteer you in your swimming pool. So, um, yeah, I don't know if we need to be, bring sleeping bags or what. Um, but, uh, or if you can suggest some good staying quarters around your place, or if you're going to put us up at your place. Not that I'm volunteering your house or anything, but uh, as soon as we can all start traveling without, without worrying and having to do all kinds of stuff. I think we're all ready. So, and we should do, we should make it like a, a huge live stream event out of it. I think it'd be fun, but yeah, d uh, deep, deep fakes are definitely very, very disturbing. So I want to open the, uh, of course the live chat is always open for comments. Excuse me, but I would like to know if you've got any questions right now, I am going to get, uh, the Synology video out here in the next couple days too, talking about the hard drives, the hard drives that people are scared of, the hard drives that people are freaking out about. You know, here's a 12 terabyte. Or no, they are not going to force these on the DS series. It's just not going to happen. Folks need to settle down a minute. Sim it down now because it's not going to happen. They would destroy their business if they force us to use those hard drives on every NAS, it's just not going to happen. They would also ruin a ton of partnerships and they don't want that to happen. So uh, you're probably wondering why, if you go to my website, you don't see the link to buy Synology surveillance station licenses. And the reason for that is um, we ran into a snag and it was taking one week and two weeks to get, uh, my inside salesperson at Synology to get the distributor to turn a quote around. Now, I think there's some other things that were happening there. So I'm just pushing everybody to Amazon for now um, because it's the quickest and most reliable way to get it. So we're going to see uh, Synology actually had one of their uh, people who've been with the company a while call me this last week. We talked on the phone. She is... Uh, very confident that they can turn this around and, and, you know, she wants, she's like, you know, let's, let's do this one more time. Give me, you know, 
give me a shot to pre. And so we're going to try it again here. We'll see. Um, back to the comments. Unky Joe's king of cheap Airbnb, only $5,000 a night per person, hot water and pool extra. Right on. Uh, Jack squat says all the new tech is being held up for months because of worldwide supply supply chain slowdown. Yes. Tell me about it. We've been trying to get stuff. Uh, luckily grand stream had containers full of phones in the States. So while other, uh, providers are having problems supplying handsets, we are not having the same problem getting handsets. And if you think it's because we're not selling handsets, you're wrong. Um, we've got the approval for over 500 handsets in the last two weeks. So we are moving handsets. Steve says, FYI, the Axis cameras have great integration with QNAP. They also have great integration with uh, Synology as well. But we are going to jump into all the QNAP features. Uh, Cecil says, what is the best source for Grandstream devices? I am ramping up the rate and volume for my AP installations. So there's a couple distributors in the States. Um, if you work with us, we hook you up with Microcom and you buy at our price. Um, and we are working out a similar deal with Streakwave. So we'll see how that works out for us. Gibby says, question for everyone. YubiKeys are app authenticator. Getting to issue new laptops to everyone in the company and want the 2FA. I would go with a YubiKey and in some locations 2FA. So we'll see how that works. Have I looked into the FortiGate VPN exploit? No, but what I have done is pull a lot of 48s out. Um, we don't uh, recommend or uh, sell FortiGate. I do work on a lot of them, um, and I do pull a lot of them out. Oh, one thing that I'm excited about is Tony over at QuickTech. He is uh, sending over a uh, an ATEM Mini Pro which is a device that will allow me to hook cameras and sound directly into it and stream without the computer and do some really cool things. If you haven't been over to Tony's channel uh, or Joe's channel over at Cajoling and watched some of their live streams lately, the one thing that I was like just like blown away by is that there's a Chrome plugin that lets me take your comments and that we will be able to put your comments up on the screen and do all kinds of cool things with graphics. And I'm really excited about that. That might be the like, one thing that I'm the most excited about, about that, but, um, yeah. And, uh, like I said, I am going to be working on that, um, on that ubiquity breach video. That's, I want to get that out this, this weekend. Crazy clown says, Willie hosting a ubiquity controller to control multiple sites. How much traffic would it generate regarding data? That depends on how many sites you have. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, if you're an MSP or a reseller, or even you've got a large home network, just go talk to Riley over at Hostify. Uh, there's a link. There's a link down below. Go talk to Riley. They just do it right, and um, makes it easy for running your for running your uh, Unify controller. So I've got a couple things. I got that. I got a network. I got to finish today. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of the network that I'm working on. Trying not to show you anything proprietary here. Um, oh, I took a, I, I took, um, I'm going to download this picture because I thought it was funny. Um, let's see. I got to make sure that what I download is appropriate and that you think it's funny. Um, let's see. There's that. I think that probably, oh, yeah, I'm going to download this because I want to show this to you, too. Let's see, anything else? No. So I'm going to download these real quick. I love how uh, I can just pull these right off of here. Bear with me for just a second. And uh, I, I would really like to think, just know that I do appreciate all 65 of you that are here and everybody that's been in and out. Um, let me see real quick before we go back to the comments. I want to show you these pictures. Um, I'm going to show you a picture that I took 
uh, yesterday. Um, and this is, uh, this is a real picture. I took this picture. I promise you that I took this picture and this is a picture f- uh, of only fans. So I took, I took this picture <laughs> of only fans yesterday and, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was, um, I thought it was hilarious to be honest with you. Um, let's see what else I've got here as far as photos go. Um, believe it or not. So when you are on the whole 30, you don't have to like cut out everything and you're going, Willie, what are you doing eating a waffle? Well, this is legit cooked in a waffle maker, but this is legit, not a regular waffle. So this is made out of shredded potatoes and eggs with spices in it. And man, they are good. You just got to be a little creative, uh, when you're doing these things, trying to lose weight. We were thinking about, uh, taking a quick uh, uh, weekend down to um, down to Gatlinburg. Look at this. This is crazy right here. The um, this is the traffic. This was on 330 2021. This is a this is a, a photo of the strip that runs through Gatlinburg, Tennessee. They have they said that they have never had they've never had the uh, the tourism boom that they're having now. So everybody's working remotely can work from wherever. And so they are shoulder to shoulder. I mean, we went down a couple of years ago in July and it was this busy in July. This is March. So if this tells you what people are ready to travel, people are ready to, to stop being cooped up. People are ready to, to get back. All right. So here is uh the current network that I'm finishing up today. So we've got the Protectly up here. There are three eight port Netgear PoE switches. Here's a 24 port and a 48 port Netgear uh, PoE switch. And then there are eight Grandstream GWN um, 7630 APs. And this network is going to rock. So that is what I'm working on. We've also got that fo- other phone system that we're working on. And I'm going to do a video on the GDS uh, 3710, which is a grand stream door station that has the camera in it. So pretty excited about that. All right, back over to the comments. Hey, everybody say hi to Tom Lawrence with Lawrence Systems. Tom, Tom is in the house. Tom's been making his rounds on some live streams uh, lately. Let's see here. All right, back to the comments. With regards to enterprise authentication, I was recently introduced to double octopus enterprise authentication. Huh. Going to have to take a look at that. Cajoling tech says, what is your recommendation for a 16 or 24 port switch? At least until Grandstream has one. So it's really going to depend on your needs. And honestly, if you're not doing anything crazy, I would look at it like one of these net gears, like I just showed you, uh, over in the comments. So, um, They've got a lifetime warranty, and if you're not, like I said, if you're not doing anything crazy, the Netgear is going to work just as good as any other brand for Layer 2 stuff. All right. Uh, Admin Engineer says, I've got about 1,000 devices on my Linux Unified Controller with at least 200 sites and no impact on my controller. So, yeah, but when you talk about, like, Hostify, Hostify has 100,000 devices, 100,000-plus devices and 1,500 customers. I mean, they... They uh, they really know what their stuff and what's going on. So um, I don't I decommissioned my hosted controller. I don't do a hosted controller anymore. I push everybody over to Riley over at Hostify. It's just not it's just not worth it um, for my time to do that. Jack Squat says no matter where I order Grandstream products from, usually Baltic Networks, which they're only like two hours from me. I need to get up there. They all ship from Teledynamics in Texas. That's that's interesting because none of my stuff has ever come from Teledynamics. Um, and Teledynamics and I, I had an interesting conversation. So uh, Yaystar uh, sent me a PBX to, they wanted me to learn. They wanted, Yaystar wants me or wanted me at one point to be the national training uh, expert for Yaystar PBXs in the United States. And they sent me a PBX and just to get the PBX from Teledynamics, they wanted me to fill out a credit app and they wanted me to put a credit card number. They wanted me to like email. And I was like, this is the non-starter. Like you don't email credit card numbers and I don't want credit with you. I only want the device that Yaystar. And so it was this big thing and I still get the Teledynamics uh, propaganda in the mail, but uh, it's one of those things that you set by the toilet and you know, you read, 
uh, when you're bored. Uh, Cecil, you can definitely reach out to me and I'll get you hooked up with a reseller. I don't make, uh, I don't make any like front end, uh, commission on that. I may make like a one point on those. Um, so it's, it's, and you're still buying at my price. They're not marking it up for that. So let's see. Yeah. Netgear makes decent stuff and it's, it's got a lifetime, a lifetime warranty. So Tom, in case you missed it, uh, I've, I've got my own version. Uh, so, uh, Tom and I were talking when Tom was creating his video, uh, about the ubiquity breach. And I told him, I said, I'm not going to make a video like that. I'm just going to refer people. And Tom earlier in the stream, I told people if they wanted a really good breakdown to go look at your video. So if you're looking at a breakdown from that standpoint, go look at Tom's video. My video, when it comes out, is going to be about those AWS and cloud best practices that uh, Ubiquity could have been employing to mitigate uh, some of the fallout from this. So if you want that that breakdown, like you know, like a few people have been doing, go check out Tom's video on that. Um, let's see. Perth is in the house. Silas, how are you doing this morning? Um, anyone know how to download Minecraft on an Asus Asus MacBook? What? There is no such thing as an Asus MacBook. MacBook is MacBook is Apple, not Asus, right? So, all right. Any other questions? Go ahead and throw them over in the comments. And uh, we are going to be doing a lot more micro tick. Uh, videos and I've got a customer and I can't tell you who they are, but I can tell you about the project that we're working on and what they've got is they have uh, about 500 remote sites where they're providing Wi-Fi using the Microtik LTE uh, solution as the backhaul. And then they're using another vendor for the actual APs. Now, this service is a service where you can, um, it's, it's using blockchain and some stuff, and it's, it's a really cool concept. But what they want to be able to do is they want to be able to um, manage the MicroTik devices from their office from a central location. They didn't want to use uh, necessarily the dude. They wanted to use some like SNMP monitoring tools and some other monitoring tools. And so what we're doing is at their office, we're putting a micro tick in and we're putting an open VPN server on it because here's the kicker to this, right? They don't want to buy static IPs for every one of those 500 remote locations. So what we're doing to get around the carrier grade NAT uh, and, and the double NAT is we're creating an open VPN server on a static IP at their main office. And then we're going to have each of those 500 devices be a client back to HQ. And then they're going to be able to manage those devices uh, from the office. So it's a really cool project that we're working on and I'm delivering the uh, HQ config later this weekend. And then we're going to, uh, uh, you know, totally prove a concept and make sure that everything works. Yeah. And like Tom says, the real issue is that ubiquity has not directly said that they have updated their security. They haven't said a lot, and Tom, uh, Tom, uh, if you weren't here earlier, you know, talking about when data breaches happen, about how the lawyers take over and only allow you to, uh, you know, say certain things. Um, we can do if you all want to see a video of an uh, of an anatomy of a um, of how this actually goes down. Um, I've got resources and I work with law firms and insurance companies because you have to be prepared for these kinds of things. Noodle says, let's all thank the gods. There aren't any Asus MacBooks, right? Bob asks, what handsets would you pair with a newer Grandstream PBX in a residential uh, setting still working on the WAF? So it depends. Like, is this like a retirement home or something like that? Because I may not use Grandstream handsets. I may. So they've got, let me pull this up. They've got some more of these GRP series phones coming out and they've got a, um, a two liner coming out. They've still not, um, done what, um, they've still not done what we're looking for as far as, uh, these, 
I need a phone with big buttons, right? But they have what they call the Essentials, uh, the GRP Essentials phones. So let's uh, switch over to this. And so they've got this GRP 2601P. And so you, what you want to do is when you're looking at these model numbers, uh, sometimes it's confusing what's POE and what's not. But if it's got a P at the end of it, it is POE uh, on, on these series. Now, the higher end phones is a little bit different. So all of these that you see here are POE. And this 2602 actually has wireless because how do I know that? Because there's a W there. Now... In a residential setting, you could use this uh, GRP 2601. Uh, this phone's about 44 bucks um, when you buy it directly from the uh, from the wholesaler. And look, Bob, you're already on the phone, so it's like it was meant to be, right? But you should uh, could check this out. However, you know that I still really, 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 really like these flying voice uh, phones. Let me pull up that flying voice, and I'm supposed to be getting one as soon as they hit the, uh, the so who knows how long it's going to be. I just saw somebody ordered, um, I just saw that somebody ordered some Juniper switches back in December, and they just got delivered yesterday. So let's talk about supply chain problems, but if it's like a, a, a hotel or um, a, a retirement center or things like that, I might actually go with this. This is a big, big button phone. It's a low frills phone. It's got an emergency button. This thing is going to just give you the connectivity that you need. And it's SIP based. Um, it doesn't need to be fancy. I don't know what the MSRP is on this. I'm going to have to look it up. I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these phones. However, we know the Achilles heel of the flying voice phones, which they now it is under consideration for change is to get these ports moved and to get, get something done so that you can wall mount these without having that ratty looking uh, cable. So we'll see how long it takes their engineers to make those changes. All right, let's see. Let's see. Not sure where we're talking about NDA there. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, I honestly think Crazy Clown says, let's hope that Hostify isn't next. Um, and talking with Riley, because I have conversations with Riley, um, their security protocol is much different than... Um, than Ubiquities apparently was. And so I actually have less, I have more confidence in Riley and his team's ability to keep those controllers safe. Now, none of them were joined. Now, had those controllers been joined to the Ubiquity cloud, now you've got a problem because uh, not necessarily for, it wouldn't be for the whole Hostify infrastructure, but it would only be for those controllers that they're hosting um, that, you know, those passwords would have been compromised. So, um, I don't think that's the case. I think at this point it would take some sort of weird thing for that to happen, like somebody actually compromising their host and things like that. Um, but who knows, right? People are always the weakest link in these things. Uh, David Anderson asks, why aren't Wi-Fi VoIP phones more prevalent in the industry? Well, they it depends on who you're looking at for manufacture. There are a lot of VoIP resellers that won't even touch Wi-Fi. Um, so it's like, I don't know. Well, I mean, if you're using ubiquity access points and you're trying to do Wi-Fi voice, you're going to have a bad day. If you use Grandstream access points, they you can actually specifically tell them to give voice priority and things like that. Now, you have to remember that regular Wi-Fi is a, um, is a half duplex communication. So you send and you send and then you receive. Right. So and um, voice um, is is sensitive to that uh, voice is sensitive to latency, uh, packet drops and, and things like that. So traditionally, people would stay away from voice. We do not. We deploy uh, Grandstream APs and we've had great success. I'm not saying we haven't had our share of failures, but I'm saying that we have had great success with it, too. Usually the failures come when we're not using Grandstream APs. Resi says. 
The uh, 1625s are fine for aged care. For residents, staff is a different uh, matter. We use Cisco for that. Then you're paying too much for your phones. Um, You are checking out way too much. You're paying way too much if you're using Cisco. Cisco did not invent voice over IP. What they did was they made it complicated, right? Talking about partitions and this and that. And then when Cisco first came out, you had to have a Microsoft Exchange server and licensing. And you had to, I mean, Cisco just makes it way too complicated. Look at other solutions. Like Cisco just makes VoIP way too complicated and way too expensive. Uh, Jack Squat says, Grandstream UCM 63 series, 6300 series, PBX, top to bottom, front to back, configura- configuration video, suddenly shoot to the top of the queue. Yeah, so uh, we are going to be doing that. Uh, Yay Link makes a good phone. Uh, Cisco is also dabbling in the network as a service, infrastructure as a service, and I got to tell you why I don't like anything as a service. Because when you switch to anything as a service, it keeps economically disadvantaged people economically disadvantaged. Um, When you can't own things and you don't have the freedom to own things and you keep making a monthly payment on things, um, it doesn't make any sense to pay $12 a month for your switch that's a $250 switch. Right, if it's got a lifetime warranty or all that, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Anything as a service, I'm going to say it again, and I believe this keeps economically disadvantaged people economically disadvantaged. And maybe people want to keep people economically disadvantaged. We do not, so we will help people become owners of of that. It, it what companies have done, and I'm all about people making money, is they have you know figured out um, you know how to keep that that money coming in and just making even more money and how much money is enough. I love capitalism, but how much money is enough, right? At some point you have to care about your fellow man, your fellow human beings. Um, Otherwise that money is going to dry up. So yeah, anything Cisco, Cisco's not necessarily complicated, but it is definitely uh, on the, uh, on the expensive side. Um, Let's see here. Let's see. Governments use Cisco because they get stitched up. Um, you know, part of that is is probably uh, true, but the old saying that nobody ever got fired for Cisco, that's changing. That is chasing, changing. Um, and I'm not saying that people are getting fired. That's not what I mean. But I mean that people are understanding that Cisco doesn't necessarily have the value that it would have held a decade ago, right? More people are being educated about those things. So it, uh, we've been here, um, hold on just a second. Yes. No. Okay. So, um, but wait, it's managed. No, it's not necessary. <laughs> uh, yeah. So router as a service is ridiculous. And actually I think the, the FCC changed the rules. I don't, I don't think they can charge you. F- uh, they were charging people for the, you had your own router on their service and I don't think they can do that anymore. So yeah. All right. It is the, uh, we've been going at this about an hour. So go ahead and put any more, um, questions that you've got over in the comments. Uh, yeah, I get questions about Starlink all the time. And, uh, I think you're going to see Starlink popping up all over the place. Um, now I will tell you that, um, I believe that Comcast, and I don't have any super hard proof, but putting the the puzzle pieces together, I've seen some things where people have been on Comcast plans that Comcast hasn't supported in quite a few years, and those clients start having problems. And then once they upgrade to a new package, the Comcast problems go away. Here's another thing, and you all put your thinking caps on, get ready to twirl your hair, scratch your eye. Think about this. Had a customer... We just pulled them off of uh, Spectre, Spectre, Spectra, Spectre. I don't know. They're in uh, Michigan. It's a cable ISP up there. I think it's Spec- Spectre, Spectre Link. Somebody from Michigan, let me know. There's a big, big cable ISP up there. I, um, Tony, have a good weekend, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. 
And uh, so we uh, ported the phone numbers away from that ISP. They were using them for internet and for phones. We ported the phone numbers away. We put in a PBX system on-prem. They're now saving $180 a month. All of a sudden, their cable modem goes bad. Well, luckily for us, when we set up Telnex, we uh, set it up so that if your service, uh, for some reason the trunks can't reach your PBX, we auto-roll your Spectrum. Thank you, Tom Lawrence. Spectrum. We set it up so that we auto-roll your uh, phone numbers uh, over to a, a destination of your choice, which was this was the owner's uh, cell phone number. And um, so they were still getting phone calls. They're still getting all that stuff. Well, modem went bad, right? Well, it, it, it very, very convenient that two days after we pull those phone numbers off and we get everything ported that they start having problems. I, I don't believe in coincidence in a lot, a lot of cases. And that is one place where I do not believe in coincidence, just like with this Comcast thing. The usage has been the same, but Comcast wants, you bump, wants to bump you up to that next tier. I think that there are things that happen, and um, it's unfortunate. So, um, yeah. All right, so we are going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to get my uh, son to work. It's going to be really nice out today, so i got to get some stuff done out in the yard before I start working on networks and videos again. I want to thank everybody for being here, all the other YouTubers that are in the house, Joe over at Cajoling Tech, Unky Joe from Unky Joe's Playhouse. We've got uh, Tony from Quick Tech, and we've got Tom Lawrence in the house. I don't know if I saw anybody else that was a creator that was here or not, but I want to thank you all for uh, stopping by. Dave Robertson, shoot me an email. Um, I'm going to do a full Telnex configuration video, but shoot me an email. I'll send you the screenshots that we've got for that, and you can get that auto phone rolled up. So, once again, I want to thank you all for being here on this beautiful Saturday. Remember to give the video a likes, a likes, a likes up, a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share. If you uh, need IT consulting, remember you can reach out at uh, willyhow.com. You can fill out that uh, contact form and we will definitely take care of you. And uh, if you need anything, uh, we was just talking to some of the other creators about this and I know... Um, Sometimes it's difficult, but I do return every single email personally that is sent to me. So if you've got something that you need, shoot it over, and I will definitely at some point respond. It may take me a day or so, but I do respond to every single message that comes through. I want to thank you all for being here. Have a great weekend. And